Welcome. Welcome to this talk on the seven equations on the simplification of the dynamic equation. My name is Hubert Johnson from the University of Queensland. The seven equations are a system of two equations to solve one dimensional and steady operational flow. One equation is the conservation of mass or continuity. The second equation is conservation of momentum or dynamic equation. The equations were first published in 1871 by a Frenchman, Ademar by de Savenant. His first name was Ademar, and his family name was Paré de Savenant. At the same time, in 1871, Ademar by de Savenant published, in fact, two papers, one with the derivation of the Savenant equation, the second one with its application to the prediction of the onset, development and propagation of the tidal bore of the Seine River in France, a mighty bore at the time. The seven equations were developed based upon six key assumptions. A one-dimensional flow, and in turn, the transverse for surface profile is horizontal. Very small or negligible streamline curvature, implying in particular that the pressure distribution are hydrostatics, the flow resistance is assumed to be the same as in steady uniform equilibrium flow or the same depth and velocity, regardless of the trends in depth or velocity. A small bed slope, typically valid for a slope less than four to eight degrees. A constant water density, in turn implying that self aeration and sediment suspension are neglected and a fixed boundary channel, neglecting sediment motion. This last assumption has been science relaxed if we introduce additional equation for the entrainment on the entrainment of sediment, combined with an equation for the conservation of mass for the sediment bed, sometimes called Exner equation. In a differential form, the seven equations are shown here, with the first equation being the conservation of mass, the second equation being the conservation of momentum. In the dynamic equation, the first term is linked with the acceleration. The second term is an initial term, and the last two terms are linked to the friction slope and to the bed slope. Let us now look at the order of magnitude of these various terms. Let us consider, for example, a flood flow during which the velocity increase from one to two meters per second in three hours. It's a very fast increase. It's almost a flash flood. So dimensionless acceleration would be of the order of 10 to the minus five to 10 to the minus six. If we consider a situation whereby the velocity increase from one to 1.5 meters per second, along a 10 kilometer long reach, for example, because of a contraction in the channel cross-section, the initial term would be of the order of 10 to the minus six. If we looked at terms such as the friction slope, the bed slope or the slope of the free surface elevation, experiment or observation in flat sections show value between 10 to the minus three to 10 to the minus four with value for the Rhone River between Valence and Avignon in a fairly flat section of the French Rhone. And in the Brisbane River, in the lower Brisbane River Valley between Mogil and Othorn, again in a very flat section. During a flood event documented in the Missouri River, the discharge increased by nearly a factor four from about 700 cubic meter per second to nearly 3,000 cubic meter per second. And during such an event, the dimensionless acceleration term was less than 5% of the friction slope. A number of observations during several floods of the Kitakami River in Japan show that the dimensionless acceleration on initial terms combined were less than 1.5% of the version with distance of the water depth. On during flood of the Kondaman River and Brisbane River in January 2011, similar observation were done. So in turn, 
we may, under appropriate condition, simplify the Savonin equations. And the key words or the key expression is under appropriate conditions. This simplification typically applies to the dynamic equation only, with the continuity equation remaining unchanged because conservation of mass is uppermost important. One equation, or one approximation, sorry, is a diffusive wave approximation whereby the dynamic equation is simplified in the so-called diffusive wave equation shown here, neglecting acceleration on inertia. It is called a diffusive wave equation because it may be rewritten in terms of the water discharge. And in that form, we obtain what is equivalent to an advective diffusion equation with analytical solution shown on the right. On one, among other, solution being the kirsch muskinga method. A further approximation is the kinematic wave equation, whereby the dynamic equation becomes S0 equal SF. That is, the same equation as the steady uniform equilibrium flow momentum equation, but this is in an unsteady flow because there remain an unsteady term in the continuity equation. Importantly, the kinematic wave approximation can only describe a downstream propagation of a disturbance. This is fairly restrictive. On the other hand, because it's a very simplified approximation, we may derive analytical solutions such as a monoclinal wave or a dam break wave solution down a steep slope, the development by Dr. Bruce Hahn from the University of Canterbury. Very nice mathematical development. So as we reach the end of this talk, let us try to summarize the key points. The seven equations are a system of two equations to solve one dimensional and steady operational flow. Some key terms in the dynamic equation include the friction slope, bed slope, and slope of the free surface elevation with experimental observation in reverse system down to the lower or flat sections. Under appropriate conditions, the dynamic equation may be simplified, also the continuity equation should remain unchanged. And among the well-known simplification, the diffusive wave and the kinematic wave. For those interested, here is a number of relevant bibliography, including a YouTube channel. Thank you very much. <laughs>